The 1970s was the decade when Saturday morning cartoons became a major phenomenon, with kids tuning in to watch a plethora of syndicated animated shows every week. While Hanna-Barbera Productions made many of these shows, there were also some notable 70s cartoons made by other studios, such as Filmation. For those looking to take a step back to their childhood, revisiting any of these classic Saturday morning cartoons could prove the perfect escape. Join Facts First as we explore the best 70s cartoons to remind you of your childhood. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? was an animated mystery comedy produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions for CBS. Though the series premiered on September 13, 1969, it went on to become a defining part of both the 70s and the early Saturday morning cartoon phenomenon. The original series only lasted for two seasons, ending October 31, 1970. After the end of the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You, the titular character was used further in the spin-off shows Scooby's All-Stars and The Scooby-Doo Show. Later in the 70s, these spin-off series were repackaged back under the name Scooby-Doo Where Are You when they re-ran on ABC. In the days since, all episodes of Scooby's All-Stars and The Scooby-Doo Show were released on DVD as the third season of Scooby-Doo Where Are You, which helped clear things up for fans. Since the 1970s, Scooby-Doo Where Are You has snowballed into a full-blown media franchise with multiple theatrical motion pictures, direct-to-video features, made-for-TV features, and series iterations. The character is arguably more popular than ever, which only makes it that much more lucrative of a nostalgic prospect to go back and revisit the show that started it all. The Pink Panther Show Originating in 1969, The Pink Panther Show was a series made up of various shorts featuring the character of the Pink Panther, who had previously been popularized in the animated opening credit sequences featured in the series of live-action films of the same name, starring Peter Sellers. As the films became more and more popular, the cartoon character started to take on a life of its own, which is how he eventually was able to get his own TV series. After premiering in 1969, The Pink Panther Show aired new episodes until 1978. The show was produced by the duo of David H. Dipati and Frizz Freling, who were known for their work on some of the most classic Looney Tunes shorts. The shorts ended their original production run on the same year The Pink Panther Show began airing, and it proved a fine use of the duo's immense talents. Fred Flintstone and Friends The original run of the Flintstones had been over for several years by the time the 70s rolled around, but Hanna-Barbera wasn't going to let one of their most prestigious intellectual properties sit around and do nothing during the boom of Saturday morning cartoons. Since new episodes weren't exactly an option at the time, the studio decided to create an anthology series made up of various less successful cartoons, with Fred Flintstone as the host tying it all together. The end result was Fred Flintstone and Friends, which was offered up for syndication in 1978. The series featured new wraparound segments starring Fred Flintstone. The original voice of Flintstone had died in 1977, meaning that Hanna-Barbera had to find a new voice. When choosing a new voice, they went with someone who had a little bit of experience with the property. They chose Henry Corden, who had previously performed Fred's singing voice in the 1966 feature film The Man Called Flintstone. Henry proved perfect for Fred's new speaking voice and continued voicing the character in different capacities until his death in 2005. The Tom and Jerry Show Like Fred Flintstone and Friends, The Tom and Jerry Show was an attempt to take advantage of a popular intellectual property that wasn't seeing much use during the time period. The series began airing in 1975, and a total of 16 episodes were produced. It marked the first time the characters of Tom and Jerry had been featured in animations made specifically for television. This was in contrast to their previous theatrical shorts. Sadly, increased media scrutiny of the 1970s made it so much of the slapstick violence that defined the characters had to be toned down. Because of this, the series is rarely brought up when people talk about Tom and Jerry. But it still could provide a nice nostalgic viewing for those who watched it back in the day. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Schoolhouse Rock while Schoolhouse Rock wasn't a traditional animated series, it was certainly a memorable part of Saturday morning traditions for children of the 70s. Schoolhouse Rock was a series of uniquely animated educational shorts that aired between traditional Saturday morning programming on ABC. The shorts not only covered topics like grammar, science, history, and mathematics, but also more groundbreaking topics for the time, such as civil rights and economics. Since the original run of Schoolhouse Rock, the shorts have maintained popularity both for their educational appeal and their unique nostalgic charm. 
Much of the animation and education material still holds up today, and the series was even revived for new episodes twice, once in 1993 and another time in 2009. Although the new shorts didn't make as much of an impact as the classics, little else beats the original Schoolhouse Rock when it comes to nostalgia. Looney Tunes as we've already briefly discussed, Looney Tunes wasn't an animated series, but a series of theatrical animated shorts that began in the year 1930 and continued to be produced until 1969. The series has come to be associated strongly with the golden age of American animation, alongside the early works of Walt Disney. Although the shorts stopped being produced in 1969, they began being syndicated on television in the 70s. Because of this, Saturday morning cartoon viewers have grown to have a strong attachment to the Looney Tunes shorts. The shorts popularized characters like Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, Wile E. Coyote, The Roadrunner, Tweety, and Sylvester. Hong Kong Fooey Hong Kong Fooey was one of Hanna-Barbera Productions' original 1970s series, running from 74 to 76 on ABC. The series followed the exploits of its titular Pooch, who gets into all sorts of comedic crime-fighting exploits with his much more capable sidekick Spot. Super Friends Super Friends is another Hanna-Barbera production that got its start in the 70s, first airing in 1973. As compared to the original characters that featured in Hong Kong Fooey, much of the cast of Super Friends was made up of various popular superheroes taken from DC Comics. Of course, these included icons like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman. The series was subsequently revived in 1980. Josie and the Pussycats Josie and the Pussycats was another cartoon from Hanna-Barbera that took its inspiration from an already established intellectual property. It was based on characters from a comic book series, the Josie and the Pussycats series published by Archie Comics. When adapting the comic book series to animated form, Hanna-Barbera opted to give the show a mystery-solving format similar to Scooby-Doo. Josie and the Pussycats' original run consisted of 16 episodes from 1970 to 71. In 1972, it was reconceptualized as Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space, which warranted 16 additional animated episodes for the classic characters. Both iterations of the series continued to be aired in reruns over the course of the 70s. In 2001, the series was adapted into a live-action film of the same name. Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids Finally, let's take a look at Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. Although it's certainly a good deal harder to enjoy the work of Bill Cosby now than it was back in the day, the original series still holds up as one of the most nostalgic animated series of its time, thanks to both its incredibly dated aesthetic and its cheap animation. The series was created and produced by Bill Cosby, who was a much more family-friendly figure back then. Bill's own early years inspired the series, which depicted his time growing up in Philadelphia with his childhood gang of friends. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below to share if we left out any of your favorite nostalgic cartoons from this time period. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.